Well, hey, everybody. I wanted to talk today about um, saying no when you're a new paralegal and why you would do so. So let's cover about four items here. So when you are in your first job and you do not have enough time to complete a task that an attorney is coming up uh, to hand you and saying, I'd like you to format this, or I'd like you to file this today, um, or I'd like you to, whatever it is, you have to be, you have to be a great communicator with your attorney and say, well, I'm working on this right now. Um, should I do, you know, slip that in after I'm done with this? And they may say, well, it has to get filed today. So it might be that it's ready to go and you can just file it. But if it's a project that um, you need to make corrections on, you need to format and all that, and it's going to take some time, make give your attorney, put the ball in your attorney's court and say, what would you like me to work on next? I'm working on this. I should be doing this for how many more minutes? Like estimate when you'll have it done and I could put it in after that. And let them make those decisions, not you. Don't You don't call the shots as to what you work on during the day, they do. And if they don't, um, if they are, it's seeming like they're asking you to make those decisions, you go ask them, I'm working on these five items. Do you want me, because you're new, do you want me to work on, you know, what order do you want me to work on these? And put the ball in their court, okay? So you can, instead of saying, no, I can't work on that, <laughs> that won't go over well, but Show them what you're working on and put the ball in their court and ask them for their decision, okay? Number two, don't be afraid to leave a job if you're in it, you know, that's your first job, but you're not enjoying that area of law. It may be that you need to move to a different law firm and work in a different area of law. But if you can stay there for one year, that would be perfect, okay? It would look better on your resume. Um, so you can say no to working in an area of law that just is not cutting it for you. It's not enjoyable. You're dreading going to work. If you can put up with it for a year, then you're building a nice look to your resume. And if, if you can stand it for two years, that's even better. But one year is fine. Um, and then when you move, make sure you, you ask for more money because you're bringing a lot more value to that next law firm. Okay. Number two, let's see, that was two. Number three, say no to playing small. You know, if you have an idea where it could make work or life easier for the law firm, because you're used to doing this in an office situation or a retail situation, as far as organ organizing the work, wait a couple months, sit back, and get the lay of the land and understand the culture of the law firm and the people you're working with first before you start trying to input your solutions because it'll come off as being quite the diva or devo. You know, you want to you wanna also, when you share these ideas, share it with a person who can make decisions about whether it gets implemented or not. The staff aren't going to be the ones that implement it as far as making the decision, but the powers that be will. So if you have the ear of an attorney, you've been talking with your attorney, um, but you're getting to know um, maybe one of the partners in the firm or wherever you work, then it's nice if you can talk to them about that. Okay. Keep that, tuck that away, but don't, overstep your bounds the first two months on the job. Number four, it would really, really help you to Google the following. Rules of professional conduct for paralegals in the state of blank. And the other thing to Google is rules of professional conduct for the state of uh, rules of professional conduct for attorneys for the state of blank. Look at both of those. I'm going to cover two items today. 
One of the things that paralegals are not allowed to do is to quote fees to a client. We're not allowed to do that. Don't, don't allow an attorney to push you over into that area. You're not allowed to do it. You could get fined if it's found out. And the attorney could get reprimanded by the bar. The second thing, and these are only two, you can read the rules of professional conduct and, and search for more. Um, the other thing is when you become a notary public, if you're not one now, and I'm not saying you have to go do that right now, but when you become one, don't let an, an attorney say to you, you don't need to ask for their ID. You Now, when we're working as notary publics, when we are going to notarize someone's signature that's standing in front of us, I'm either going to know who they are, I've met them before, or I don't know who they are. They're a stranger to me. If they're a stranger, then I have to ask for their ID. Okay? And I've had two or three attorneys ask me not to do that. But here's how to cover your bases. When you're in an interview towards the end, you can ask a couple of these questions. Will you be asking me to quote fees for you ever? And number two, will you ask me to notarize documents without getting ID if I don't know that person? And some attorney may say, "Did have you had to do that? And, um, you're, and you could say it if, you know, if you've not worked yet as a paralegal, well, it was wise advice given to me by a, a veteran paralegal to ask that these questions. So you can just lay it off on me, okay? But yes, I have been asked by two or three attorneys to do this. So you wanna make sure that the attorney you're working for, number one, knows you're not gonna cross the line, and number two is operating ethically. This is, Crossing these lines is lacking ethics, and that's a big deal for lawyers, and it's a big deal to the state bar as well, and they'll find out that you're crossing the line. You can get fined for those things, so don't do that, okay? So that is it for today. I wanted to cover some of these um, items that were, it's okay to say no, all right? So have a great day, and in the meantime, stay tuned for the Paralegal Career Secrets Black Book that's coming out in January. I'm working on it for you, and I will cover some of these things I've mentioned. Um, but originally, I was going to call it Mistakes Paralegals Make, but there are some other things in there that are not mistakes that I'm covering. Um, but it is uh, to be aware and also beware, okay, as a new paralegal. So that will be coming out next month sometime, uh, mid-January of 2021, and that will be a free PDF. Yes, you will have to sign up for it, and um, but it'll. I think it'll be, you know, worth it to you to read through a lot of those. And I hope to do a, a series of these, um, which are tips for new paralegals, okay? In the meantime, again, go to my website, paralegal, let's see, we'll call it um, unhackableparalegals.com. I'll put a link below. It's under my name or unhackableparalegals.com. And you can um, click on that link, go to the website and look for the 19 alternative paralegal careers list. When you sign up for that list, it'll take you to an area, uh, a hub, a paralegal hub of resources where I'm putting all a whole treasure trove of resources for you videos and a chapter of a, a chapter of my book free chapter of my book legal break in um, and you can also go to the tab at the web on the website called the legal break in tab and that will take you to where my book is that's really the first step when you're looking at this career, okay? So have a great day, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.